This is my um, newest project on my Valve Soda Involve breadboard. Um, also, I have to take care of what I touch because this is actually currently live. Um, so, what I've been doing here is uh, building a regulated power supply. It has an EF80 uh, error amplifier. Um, vacuum tube, uh, voltage regulator, like a neon gas discharge tube here. Here's a pot where you can set the voltage. This is actually just connected to the output. So you can adjust it from 160 to around 300 volts. The input is just about 400. Um, this is a PL519 that I use as the output tube. <coughs> and yeah, I'll go over the circuit in more detail, but it's it's a very simple circuit. It has been around for what seems like eternities. Um, the F80 is fed from the B plus via two meg resistor. Um, the PL519 has a two K resistor on the grid too. Um, yeah, this is just this pot sets over a voltage divider between ground and the adjusted output voltage. Um, the grid one of this EF80 tube, which in turn um, then feeds grid one of this PL519 via this wire here. Um, and there's another voltage divider here, goes around here and feeds the grid two of the EF80, um, which is so to uh, always have the grid two. Mm, uh, at the appropriate point. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is basically that. It's a very simple circuit. And I'll go over the theory of operation in, I think, another video. But um, one issue I've been having with this is, well, the voltage range is very very good um, if I switch the meter to current and just measure the output current I'll get a maximum 40 million amps which is a bit dependent on the tube this tube is well while it's still good according to my tube tester it's a bit tired um, but yeah with a fresh new old stock tube the best I could do um, on this setup is around 60 milliamps, which I can only imagine. Actually, 60 milliampere is also, it doesn't matter much uh, what the set voltage is. You can go through the whole voltage range. Um, the maximum you get out of it is 60 milliamps. Um, and yeah, the only thing I can imagine is. To this due to um, being the due to the internal resistance of this tube, um, which leads me to um, the conclusion that yeah, maybe you should use a triode as the output tube, well as the pass tube, serious pass tube, you would call it, um, because triodes have. Um, inherently lower internal resistance but then also um, power, uh, power triodes with uh, 40 watts of plate dissipation or anode dissipation are really hard to get um, so maybe I'll just put a second PL519 in, in parallel with this <clears throat> and see if my theory holds um, because the thing is, if I connect this up to grid 1 and this up to the cathode, you can see that if the regulator is on all the way, this grid is actually positive, which it shouldn't be. Um, if you turn it down, Um, this is what it 
this is what it should look like. A couple of negative volts on there. Um, but the thing is, at at zero, at basically at zero volts on the cathode, um, this tube it still has from anode to cathode here. It still has a hundred volts on it. A hundred volts should be more than enough to drive more than forty milliamps through this tube. Actually, if you look at the data sheet, um, it actually says at this point it should pass four hundred milliamps or so. But yeah, this is probably also very dependent on the grid two voltage, which is inherently low. Um, It's actually not low, no, it's fed directly from... Yeah, but in respect to the cathode, it's, it's, it's fairly low. In respect to ground, it's actually fairly high. Um, with respect to ground, it's much closer to... Um, yeah, it's around 400 volts. That's <laughs> more than enough, I suppose. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure... Maybe in the second part of this video we'll just um, analyze the schematic of this um, as it's printed. Um, yeah. So I actually revised this design again because uh, 40 milliamps of uh, current were definitely not acceptable um, for me. So I did a couple of things, and what turned out to be the solution is um, I don't use this as a pentode anymore. I tied grid 3 over here and grid 2 to the anode, basically turning it into a triode. Just for now, um, this is not going to be in the final design. I'm just going to use a triode there. Um, there's a couple of Russian tubes, I think the 6S19P. Um, is a triode that is actually intended for power supply uh, use and I think I'll end up using that uh, maybe two of them they have a plate dissipation of about uh, 10 watts so I'll probably use two and um, what I also did is uh, I put a pot over here and I have a different voltage divider on there now it's much higher value pot um, which allows you to just use a regular half watt pot instead of a to what one because those are hard to get these days um, and since this goes directly to the grid um, the, the voltage divider does um, you don't need any current ca capability on here um, you can just use a you could also use a 10 um, mega ohm pot uh, as long as you change those two resistors one here and one here um, that form this voltage divider. Those are there not only to set the upper and lower limit, but also to keep you from burning out the pot by turning it all the way down and connecting it directly up to, to the B plus or to, to ground. Um, the third change I made, um, the G2 supply for the EF80 down here is now derived from the B plus um, I had those two resistors. Um, I'm going to use proper resistors in the final version. These are just uh, very I have to get, get some more uh, dissipation from it. Yeah, um, I also put a resistor here to just trickle a bit of current through this uh, regulator tube to keep the operating parameters somewhat constant um, and that's about it now it works fairly well and I get around well let me just check that here it's now at the bottommost setting at 180 ohms and if I go to milliamps I can actually get about 400 milliamps from it um, which is also over the dissipation limit for this tube that's um, well, oh yes, I think it's just about 40 watts. Um, but yeah, 
the upper limit is now uh, much higher. It's at 370, which is nice. Um, 180 is nice because this is um, the lower limit. This is a voltage where you can use uh, Nixie tubes. This is about ideal for Nixie tubes. Yeah, and that's about it for that design. I think I'll draw up a conclusive schematic now um, and then put it all into a chassis and build a power supply from it. Well, after I change the tube here, this is not going to stay the PL519. I just did that to uh, check if it's really a problem with internal resistance and using a pentode instead of a triode. So I went to my stash of tubes and I got this, which is a new factory sealed. Oh, I had a box. 6S19P, uh, made in the Soviet Union, zirconium getter, uh, power triode with an anode dissipation of 11 watts, intended for power supply use. It's very, very pretty tube. And I have a ton of those. I have a whole uh, box of 50 of them. And I actually intended to use that, but one thing that I didn't think about was this has a 6.3 volt heater and it takes 1 amp and to uh, build a 200 milliamp power supply with a minimum voltage of 200 volts and um, an input voltage of around 400, this is what my transformer supplies, you'd need 40 watts of anode dissipation in worst case. So I would need four of those. Um, but uh, filament winding I have on a transformer really only goes up to 3 amps. So I'd either I'd had to have um, an extra filament transformer, which I don't want to do, or had to do something different. But um, I did go back to the drawing board. I read up on my vacuum tube theory a bit. Um, an excellent book to do this is um, Vacuum Tube, Electron Tube Circuits, it's called, by Samuel Seeley, PhD. Um, this is also where I got uh, um, the circuit that I based this uh, regulator on from. And I read up in this and a couple other books, and I decided for myself it's perfectly fine to use a power pentode in triode mode in a power supply. I always thought this was a bit naughty, but you can actually do this um, without any issues. So we're back to the PL519. And this has 40 watts of anode dissipation. If you take in the grid 2 dissipation and the grid 3 dissipation, you can, you can tie all three of them to the B plus if you want with this tube because they're all on socket. Um, this should be plenty. Also, um, I'll probably use a series string heater with the EF80. This has also a 300 milliamp heater. Even if it's branded an E tube, it has. 6.3 uh, volts of filament voltage, but also, coincidentally, 300 milliamps of voltage on there. So you can do serious string heating and drop the voltage down from the mains with a capacitor. You still got to use a fuse. Um, they never did in the old days when they did serious string sets, well, television or also radio receivers. Um, but you have to do that. And you have to spec it accordingly and, well, just take some precautions. They just had a different concept of safety back in the day. Yeah, so PL519, it's going to be probably. I'm also I'm going to use this um, that I had in the prototype, STV85 uh, voltage regulator tube. So the final circuit I'm going to use is based on this, which is directly out of Sealy's book. Um, it has a, a signal pentode down here that compares the output voltage with this voltage regulator tube. It uses a 150 volt tube, but I changed the values around a bit. Also, I changed this tube and this tube, and now it all fits together very, very nicely. The other thing I changed in the prototype was this divider here that feeds the grid 2 of the tube is fed from the regulated voltage here. I, in my design, fed it from the B+, which is not great. I'm probably going to, to do that 
the same thing they do here. I'm also going to put a capacitor in here, like this. And also this capacitor is important. Um, this basically it passes down any AC on this to the regulator tube and counteracts it. Um, that just improves regulation. What they do here is they're using a tetrode and they use it in, well, almost in tetrode mode with a 500 ohm resistor on here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strap this just with a 50 or 100 ohm grid stopper directly to the B+, and that should be fine. Yeah, that's the circuit. And what I also did is I made up this chassis for it, which um, this is just 0.5 millimeter, just steel, um, zinc uh, coated steel. And I drilled some holes into that for tube sockets, PL519, EF80, and the regulator, just with a step bril uh, drill bit which are quite excellent for that job. I have one over here. I just I bought them in a box from China. They look like this. Um, and they make it a bit easier to drill big holes into just sheet metal like this. You still probably want to use a drill press. I use the drill press. Um, I think you'll probably have to clamp this down very, very tightly if you want to do it by hand. And it, yeah, it, you just you won't get as good results, I don't think. They are fastened to the chassis with just 6mm M3 bolts. And yeah, this is where I'm going to uh, build the circuit on. I'm going to probably do it, well, just flying leads style. Because um, it's really, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight components on here, um, which one of them, the pot here, is not even on the on a board. It's really not necessary to have a printed circuit board for that sort of thing. So I'm going to wire this up and I'm going to come back to this shortly. After assembling the whole thing, it looks like this. Um, power tube here, not pass tube. I put a nice ceramic top cap on it. EF80 I've got here and uh, STB85 I have here. I put a little um, brass plate here to serve as my central grounding point. Can I? It's a bit out of focus. That is better. Um, I put a little grounding point here so I could just star ground everything there. Um, I also put all the resistors uh, as far as I could in heat shrink tubing. Um, also here on the pot where the two 220k resistors are. Um, I'll put a schematic to this on um, in the video description on my GitHub page. Well, it is in my GitHub on my GitHub page. So um, yeah, the heat shrink tubing. I put that on just to give it a bit of extra safety in case anything should short out to the chassis. Well, that way it really can't. Also, very important if you use a steel chassis is put some sort of protection here. This is um, just a bit of uh, captain um, tape and some heat shrink tubing. So if this moves, it can't cut the wire and short. Well, the output directly to ground, which would be bad. Yeah, that's about it. That's how I made this up. Um, I made the chassis a bit bigger so I could put a filter cap on here if I wanted to, or additional tubes if this should, this design should um, turn out unsatisfactorily. And also, I can mount the transformer here. Um, that's what all this extra space is for. Now, the next thing I have to do is just to make up a case for this. So this can mount in nicely. This is the progress I made on the uh, regulated power supply. 
what I did is um, I put a rectifier and a capacitor down here, wired it all up. Um, those are just the filament windings, those I'm going to connect later. And also mounted the transformer. Um, this took quite a bit of work because I had to take it from the sort of cradle it was sitting in. Um, and I had to print some standoffs down here. Um, also put some extra tech board here where I connected um, the input winding and an additional winding here. Those are both connected on the original voltage selector that um, I sort of sawed off and I put the additional wires down here. I heat shrink sleeved them a lot. Well, there's a heat shrink sleeve and they're all individually sleeved and just stuck on there. So in case something would go wrong they would short out to ground and not pose any danger. I also put some fuse holders up here. This is um, anode winding uh, input and filament, which filament I'm going to feed from um, the main, so those two are ganged together around here. Um, those are glass fuses, but they have enough rupture capacity to, um, to, to break the current, even if you uh, would short it directly. You'd be fine. And then again, this is only the sort of first line of defense, the second line is the main main breaker for the socket you're plugging it in. Um, yeah, modern equipment often uses glass fuses in mains application. I think it's fine, those have them. Well, they're, those are quality fuses, they, it, it should be fine. Um, yeah, that's about it. What I have to do still is I have to find a suitable capacitor um, that I'm probably going to mount down here and then connect it up to this last fuse so I've got my filaments heated. What I also did, I sort of made a baseboard for this that just sits in like this. And I'm going to make up a sort of case that stands on here, probably with ventilation holes in the side and the, the top so the heat can, can rise out. Yeah, and that's all about it for this segment. When I was testing the performance of the assembled amplifier, I actually noted, noticed that it wasn't as good as I thought it would be, and it was due to um, me forgetting this cap here, um, which is from the output to the grid one of the error amplifier tube. I mentioned this um, when I was talking about the schematic. This actually passes AC from the regulator down to grid one. Um, yeah, I forgot this, and this is actually a somewhat crucial part. This is um, a 400 volt DC, um, 200 volt AC spec cap with 68 nanos should be just about enough. Um, it's somewhat old. This came out of a new old stock pile of capacitors, but it's still a very good capacitor. I never had one of those fail. They're very good. Um, I think they're Mylar film capacitors. So the only thing that was really left to do with the power supply is to put it in the case. And um, Although I have done this before, um, putting a vacuum tube project into a plastic box, it always feels a bit wrong, like a 3D printed plastic box, it just it doesn't look the era and the style. So I uh, got out my amateur woodworking skills and I made a box from just from some plywood. Um, <laughs> see, I'm not, I'm not great at woodworking, there's a gap there, a gap there, but I'll probably just put some wood filler in. To just fill it up and um, it wouldn't really need it. Um, it has two stands on the bottom and this is where this is the standoffs where the chassis is going to sit. Those are made from nylon um, and also to hold the uh, front in place I glued two nuts in here and I'm just going to put some screws um, in there to hold it down. Um, additional things 
I put some holes in the bottom here where you can't see them and on the top. These are for ventilation because although vacuum tubes run very hot, um, still, if you're going to dissipate 40 watts in a in a rather smallish case, I mean, this is not huge, um, you're going to get uh, problems with heat dissipation if you don't include some ventilation. And what this does is um, it pulls in the air here, goes down under the chassis, pulls it around over the tubes and just goes out here. And if the ventilation is, is not, uh, is not um, enough so that this heats up excessively, I'll just put another row maybe, or maybe just make it all holes, I don't know. Yeah, so this is the case. What I have to do is, um, on the front plate, I have to drill a couple of holes for the meter that's going to sit in and the potentiometer and also the output. Um, also what I haven't done yet is I haven't put a hole in the back for the power cord, which I'm going to do. So this is just to show how the um, whole chassis sits in here. You can see there's not a lot of room on the bottom, but it should be enough to just draw the air around it over the tubes and out the top. Um, yeah, but it's rather compact in a way. I left some room up here um, for uh, one thing that's going to be there is um, this capacitor, which is a um, metal paper, metal foil paper type. Um, and this is get, this I'm going to use to um, heat the vacuum tube filaments from uh, directly from the mains as you're supposed to do with um, zero string sets and I think I 3D printed a little um, sort of clamp type of thing where you can put a cable tie through and then you can just mount it up here like this and just glue it on and it sits there nice and I'll probably do it this way which yeah, it has exposed mains wiring to the front then, but um, you can very much easily get to it if you ever have to take the thing out. And there's nothing worse than having this the other way around, where you have to reach around and then you'd probably touch the mains and stuff. Although you should never work on this while it's powered up. I mean, your soldering iron is grounded, you just uh, burn your tip. Well, just melt your tip, really, um, if you touch live with this. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I'm going to show um, this thing when it's completed in the next shot. The power supply project is actually coming along rather well. Um, I've got my capacitor for the filament installed up here. Um, and I've got another um, capacitor up on top here to just fine tune it because it was a little low. It was only 270 milliamps and I needed 300 so I added a little more capacitance. This is half a microfarad so... Um, also I chose a bit of a different um, solution for getting the uh, front to close in on this. I um, wood glued some spare wood here. Then I filed out a rectangular sort of cutout where I would sit a rectangular nut. And this works very well. I did the same thing on the other side here. And now it's perfectly aligned. Um, also got my grounding tab here. Um, wired all the stuff up with the um, mains plug. And then I also uh, did most of the front panel. I have the 6.3 volts here. This is just AC coming directly from the transformer back here. Um, I've got the uh, one mega on pot with the capacitor sitting here, where the wire comes out from here. And then I also have the actual regulated power here going to these two banana plugs. I also got a switch up here. I'm going to focus on that. Come on. There we go. Um, I've got a mains power switch on here, which I also just filed this out with a diamond file to sit it in there. 
Um, what I still have to do is um, I want a, a power on light here, but I don't want to use an LED because that would be, well, sacrilege really. Um, I want to have a light bulb, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 6 volt light bulb, and I'm going to 3D print um, a plastic holder that sits over here and just lets the light, light pass out this hole. And then I'll probably put some um, red transparent paper foil, um, not paper, like plastic. Just a little piece of red plastic over here, so it shines through a red light. This is what I came up with for the uh, incandescent lamp holder. I've got a 6 volt lamp in here. Yeah, it's a bit tight, but um, it's directly connected to the um, filament out, to 6.3 volt filament uh, supply. And then I've got this 3D printed plastic holder. I don't feel bad about using this in a old timey style device because yeah they in the sixties they had plastics. It would would have just been molded and not 3D printed but uh that doesn't matter to me much. And then I just put some um red packing tape down here so I get um red light out of the hole in the front. And I'll just stuff this back in there. Um I made this in a way like this so I can um, change the bulb if it ever should burn out. So I'll close the thing up and uh, just turn it on. So this is what the front panel looks like. Um, got the voltage um, knob here and the output here, which I have to put a label on there, and 6.3 filament output here. Um, on switch here, and if you turn it on, you get a red light out of that board. Which actually is a bit dimmer than uh, what it seems on camera. But yeah, I'm fairly satisfied with this. Um, what I will do is I'll put a meter up here somewhere. Um, either a um, moving coil meter or um, maybe I'll make something up with uh, three VFD tubes. Little 8mm VFD tubes. But for that I would have to finish my uh, seven segment library that I'm currently writing in C. So yeah, I think this wraps this project up.